Okay, calculus. So we are picking back up in lesson 7-2 and we're going to start finding the volume using washers. So before we get started on that, I just want to give you a question to consider. If we had this donut looking shape, so basically a disc with a hole in it, and we wanted to find the area of this part of it. So you're finding the area basically of the surface of the donut. Um, so how would we go about doing that? Well, you're gonna have to know the radius from here to here. We're gonna call that capital R. And you would have to know the radius of the little circle. We're gonna call that little r. So I think you would agree that we could do the area of the big circle minus, oops, let's put that squared in the right place, the area of the little circle. And that would give you the area of the ring. Could I write that as that right there? Sure, I factored out a pi. All right, so that's what we're gonna be getting at today. If you look over here at the slide, you're going to see that if you have this disc or this, uh, this washer basically, and you rotate it around an axis and there's a gap, um, see this gap right here? There's this gap between the rectangle and the axis. You're going to be creating a hole in your disc, hence a washer. And so um, the question is, um, what's the area of the rectangle? Um, so if I go with what I have over here, the rectangle, um, I need to find this length here, which is R minus R. And so I'm going to have W times R minus R. And then if I go and do the area of the washer, um, I'm gonna be back here to what I was just talking to you about. Um, and so we're going to move on and look at it in terms of revolving this shape around um, maybe the x-axis. So when you rotate it, you're going to see that you've got this gap again between the shape and the um, axis of rotation. Again, when you have that hole, that gap, you're going to have a washer instead of a disc. What we need to consider then um, when we go and set up our integration is that we're going to always have to find um, basically the big radius squared, which is you're going to have to find that capital R. That's going to be the length of the top of your rectangle to the axis of rotation. And then you're going to be subtracting little r, which is the bottom of the rectangle, uh, that length from there to the axis of rotation. So for a disk, you're going to be taking r of x squared minus little r of x squared and then doing your pi on the outside. Okay, let's give it a shot. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to graph it and we're going to see if we have a disk or a washer based on is there a gap between the solid or between the area and what we're rotating it around. Um, and so um, we're going to look at the square root of x, so something like that, and x squared, something like that. Okay, so it's this area here, I'm gonna just use a highlighter, that we're rotating around the x-axis. We're gonna come around this way. Okay, so basically, even though the gap doesn't go all the way through, I do have a gap here between my shape and my axis of symmetry, axis of rotation, sorry about that. All right, so I do have space between um, the bottom of the rectangle and my axis of rotation, so that's gonna be little r. This out here will be big R. So this does represent a washer. All right, volume equals pi on the outside. I'm gonna go from zero to one. 
big R is the top curve. The top curve is the square root of X. And the bottom curve is X squared. And again, this represents R squared minus little r squared. From here, we're just going to integrate as normal. Now, I don't think that's going to give you any trouble. The answer is going to be 3 pi over 10. Okay, um, let's try another one. Okay, x squared plus 1. So when x is 1, y is 2. I'm bounded by y equals 0, x equals 0, and x equals 1. So I'm bounded by all my axes, and I'm rotating around the y-axis. So I'm bounded here and here, so I know this is the region that I'm going to rotate. All right, again, I can see that there's this space here between my curve and my axis of rotation, and my rectangle is here to here, but I also have another rectangle here to here, and the reason why I have two is because the rectangles have a different left side, so I have to split that up into two areas, basically, that I'm gonna rotate around. Um, so for what I'm going to call rectangle A or region A, this will be region B, um, what I'm going to have to do is integrate from um, 1 to 2. And it's going to be my right side, that's capital R, which is at 1, minus the left side, which is here, that's little r. Well, that curve has to be in terms of y. Oops, let me clean up that. Uh, I had too many parentheses in there. There we go. So that's region A. Plus, I need to go from 0 to 1, and I need to go, this right here is just a washer. So I have a disk here. I'm sorry, I'm saying that backwards. I have a washer here. It's got a hole in it. But I have a disk here. No hole, because this is solid. So I'm just going to be taking my right minus my left and squaring it and adding it on the dy. When you add those two integrations together, we get 3 pi over 2. Okay, again, I don't think you're going to have any trouble going from here. Um, your next step would look like this. And so forth. So again, that integration isn't going to be very painful for you. Sometimes it's just a pain setting them up, but I really think if you follow and do capital R squared minus little r squared on these when you have a washer, you can't go wrong. Now I hope you're starting to see why um, this rectangle is so important. It's showing you the two radii that you have for a washer. Okay. Um, we're going to continue on here. Um, this one, this exercise is just showing you um, different ways you can revolve an area. So um, this is called other axes of revolution with a washer. So basically um, on this first one, um, we're going to take this region and rotate it here. So if I draw in my rectangle, this is going to be, let me draw, do that in a brighter color for you. This is going to be big R, and this would be little r. For this one, this is going to be big R, and this distance will be little r. 
And for this one, that distance is big R and this distance is little r. So big R is always the greater length. In some cases, it might be the bottom of the rectangle up to the line, that's this one, or it might be the top of the rectangle to the bottom of the line. But big R always represents the longer length. Okay, if I were talking about um, well, let's just apply it here so you can see how it works. Um, all right, we have y equals x squared graphed for each of these. They've done that already. Okay, um, it says here we're just going to set them up and then you can use your calculator to find the volume if you want uh, to do your integration. Um, that's not a problem. So what I think I'm going to do is just pause right here for a second. Um, let you um, oops, get this drawn in on your notes. Sorry about that. And um, I'm going to start another video going through this example and the next one. And then I think you'll have a good start on the next assignment.